Good afternoon, students. Welcome to English B class today. It's good to have each of you here with us online. Thank you for being here as well. Here's how we'll begin today's class. I would like for you to organize into groups of five. So for those of you who are here in class, please find four other persons besides yourself and organize into groups. Those of you working online, some breakout rooms have been provided for you and you can organize there as well into groups of five. You have 30 seconds to do that. Well, it seems like most of you have been organized already, so here's what we will do first of all. If you notice, I have a letter tree on the whiteboard. For those of you working online, there's a, um, a letter tree on the Jamboard that you can turn your attention to. But this letter tree um, has different letters on it, and I would like for you to try to find, or make rather, as words as you possibly can using the letters that are present on this tree. You cannot use letters that you do not see here to make your words, okay? So you have to stick to the letters on the tree. And we will do it, we will be doing this in the form of a competition. So you have two minutes. If you notice I have my timer here, I'm gonna set for two minutes, and when the timer goes off, it means your time is up and you need to be finished. So for those, those right. of you in class, let me give you some sheet to write down all of the All right, students, time is up. I see that most of you have finished writing AO, and from what I see online, some people have already started to send in their responses. Good work so far. I need one person from each group to just stand and, you know, tell me a few of the words that you all came up with. L-A-T-E. Yes, we have them. Very good. Give me one more word, um, Brian. On. Let's see. On. O. N. Good. Very good. Let's give Brian's group a nice time. All right, I see Christine at the back. Why don't you share two words in your group, Christine? Class, let's see, C-L-A-S. There's only one S there, Christine. No, that's not a word, sorry, but you know, good try, good try. Give me another word, Christine. Post, let's see, P-O-S-T. You exactly. all have it, very good. I would like for you to access your devices. So if you have a cell phone, a tablet, just access it, I just sent a link to the English WhatsApp group. You'll just click on the link and the link will take you to a game-based quiz. This quiz is based on nouns and I'd like for you to enjoy playing it while answering the questions that are asked. You have five minutes to complete this quiz and then we will continue on with our class, all right? You can go ahead and start. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that quiz. I have one more activity for you to do at this time. I have some noun slips here in my hand, but they're all empty. What you will do is you will um, look at the words, the list of words that you found earlier from the letter tree, and you are going to write only the nouns onto these slips. I would like for you to write the nouns in red. All right. Now that you've finished writing your nouns, let's do a little bit of math. Yes, we're gonna do a little bit of math in English today, and we're gonna be starting working on addition first of all, right? So what you're going to be doing for me is you're going to be taking the nouns that you wrote on that slip of paper and we're going to try to complete these phrases that you see on the whiteboard, all right? For those of you working online, you'll notice there's a similar activity on the Jamboard for you. So here's what you'll do. You're going to fill in each of the blanks to complete these phrases. So let's try to add first of all. So he, um, right in the slot here, his name was lion, right? So he said he was as brave as a lion in the fight class. Is that correct? Yes, that would be correct. Carl, good job. All right, let me see. I see some other persons are not raising their hands and they're kind of shy in a way, so I'll call you. All right, so Martin, yes, why don't you come on up and see if you can complete question, uh, not question, sorry, but phrase number three for us, please. All right, come on. All right, so we see um, this phrase would have been completed and it says that the classroom was like a mopstick. Well, you know, though it is completed, I'm not so sure that it is correct, all right? Um, Tracy, would you like to volunteer and finish up the final one? Um, could we say that the classroom is like a mopstick? No, I, I didn't think so either. Could we say that she is as thin as a zoo? Have you ever heard about a thin zoo before? No, right? Um, what What about switching the two? How about we just try switching the two and see if they will actually um, make sense to you, right? So let's try and switch it around now. Let's try and switch zoo with mop stick. All right, move these two nouns around. And let's see if it 
makes sense to us, right class? So the classroom was like a zoo. Does that sound more sensible to you? Yes, it does, right? Mm -hmm. She is as thin as a mop stick. Does that sound like it makes more sense to you, class? Of course, right? So now all of our phrases are correct. Very well. Here's what I would like for us to do now. I said we we're going to be doing maths earlier, remember? So we added, we added some nouns to all the phrases that we had. Now let's do a little bit of subtraction. So what I would like for you to assist me in doing is subtracting um, all of the areas where you see they have as strong as or as brave as or so on, or we can subtract all the areas where you see the word like. Let's subtract all the like or as brave as or whatever as, okay? Let's try doing that. But before we do the subtraction, let me ask you a question. What do you notice about these four phrases that we have on the whiteboard? Is there anything familiar? Do you remember anything from the last lesson that we did? Yes, Cara? Yes, exactly. All of these are similes, right? And we said in the last class that similes uses the words as or like to make comparisons between two things. Very good, Carl. very good, you remember. Excellent. And so now let's try to subtract, all right? So let's take away as strong as, minus this from the equation here. Let's subtract as brave as, minus this, good. Now that we've subtracted all of these specific words, let's reread these phrases and see if they are still making a comparison. He is an ox. Does that something make sense to you, class? Yes, it does. So we can see a comparison is still being made there. He was a lion in the fight. Is a comparison still being uh, made there? Yes. Does it still make sense? Of course. Good. Let's try number three. The classroom was a zoo. Comparison being made? Mm -hmm. Still making sense? Of course. And then lastly, she is a mop stick. Comparison still being made? Yes. And it makes sense. Very good. Black. With all the information you have before and with what is given to you here, why don't you please work on coming up with a suitable definition for metaphor, all right? You have two minutes to work on that, and when you're finished, I would like to hear some of your responses. All right, so two minutes um, are up. Let's see who has a definition to share with us. Tracy, go ahead. Okay, so you think that a metaphor is a comparison uh, between two objects or things? Very good. Um, Brian, yes, I mean, is a comparison between two things, same thing Tracy said. Mm -hmm. William, let me hear you. A comparison between two things in which one thing is said to be another thing. Words are used for a few things. Uh, they're used to paint a picture in our mind and it does so in a very quick manner. As soon as we read a metaphor, we get an image that comes to our mind, all right? Next. It also channels emotions and it helps us to say things in a more creative and vivid way. So a lot of times a poet or an author, they will use a metaphor to transfer the feelings or emotions that they have to us through their words. My brother is a couch potato. Think about it. Now what just came to your mind? Most likely you had a picture similar to, next slide please, similar to this came to your mind, right? Potato sitting on a couch, just relaxing. But when I said my brother is a couch potato, do I literally mean he is a potato sitting on a couch? Of course, I don't mean that, right? But what I really mean when I say my brother is a couch potato, next slide please, I mean that my brother is lazy. Because a potato, if you throw it on the couch, it won't do anything, it will just be there all day, right? Next meaning, or I can, I can mean that my brother does nothing but sit around and watch television all day. To the classroom, too. I would like for you to go take the quiz. It's a video quiz. You gotta watch the video and then answer the questions that are there. And then when you're finished, I'm gonna ask some more questions based on the video 
when you come back here to class. So you have five minutes, just go access the link and scroll down the quiz as well. I would just like to make sure that you understood everything that was shown to you on the video. So we're gonna play a game that's called Plug the Metaphors. Feels to have my ball again today, and I have some pins here on this table. Each of the pins you'll notice, they either have a simile or a metaphor written on them, all right? So what you'll do if you answer a question that I ask you correctly, you'll get an opportunity to come and bowl this ball and try to hit. You're looking to hit only metaphors and not simile. You bowl a ball and um, it hits a simile, then um, you will not be given any points for that, right? But you get a point if you are able to hit the metaphors, okay? So here's the first question. What do similes and metaphors have in common? Yes, Dwayne, I see you at the back there. What do similes and metaphors have in common? They both compare two things. All right, okay, students, let's get our game on. So Darshini, why don't you come and try? Remember, you need to hit the metaphor, Darshini, so try your best. Hit the metaphor in that box. Oh, very good, Darshini. Excellent, excellent work. All right, here we go, Dwayne. Your turn, try it again, a metaphor. Wait, hold on. He is a shining star. We're just making sure it's a metaphor, and yes, it is. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Duane. Let's see if you'll get one now. He's going, and he hits it. Oh, and it's down. Let's see if he got a metaphor. Your brain is a computer. Is this correct, class? Yes, so it now is. we are going to look at how to identify metaphors in poetry, all right? So, if you notice to my right, I have a flow chart that will help us to be able to see how we can identify a metaphor. So, the first thing that the flow chart tells us to do is to examine the text. By that I mean we need to read the text and then we read it if necessary, all right? So, from this poem extract, we see um, the poem is entitled Homework. It says homework, no one likes it. Homework is a bee sting on your tongue, it's the worst. Homework is dropping your ice cream cone on the sidewalk. How awful. I can see that yes, meaning has been added because now we're able to understand how the poet or the writer feels about homework, correct? Two, what qualities does it bring up? Well, particularly, it shows us the poet's negative feeling Metaphor hunt worksheet that I'm going to give to you. Those of you working online, I would have already sent one to the group. So just go in there and access this, all right? Access it, all right? So for these, you will identify all of the metaphors present by simply underlining them. See, see how many metaphors you can find. All right, students, I see most of you are finished with your worksheet. Let us work it out together now. For those who are still, um, not yet finished, let's work it together so that we can be able to identify all of the metaphors that are present on the worksheet, right? So let's do it. Whenever you see a metaphor, what I want you to do is clap like this, right? And then I will underline the metaphor that is present, all right? So let's read it and let's um, look up for the metaphors. So when I woke up on Saturday, my mom said I was a sheepdog with my long shaggy hair and it was time for me to get my hair cut. So I hear somebody clapping here. So you saw a metaphor. Okay, so the metaphor here is what? Right. I was a sheep. Oh, so now that we're winding down, I would just like for us to briefly recap what we've learned so far. So we learned what are metaphors. We learned about the different types of metaphors. We learned about how to identify metaphors. We learned how to write metaphors. So I have in my hand here a poem by the name of Dreams, was written by Langston Hughes, all right? For those of you working online, you just need to go to the group and click on the link that's been sent there for you, and you'll also get access to this poem. So what you'll do for me is that you will um, identify one metaphor that is used in the poem, Dreams, then you are going to explain the comparison that is being made there. So good job completing your analysis of the poem, Dreams. We have two persons who shared their completed work with us. We have Jenny here, and then we have Karen, all right? So you were supposed to identify one metaphor, and um, on, on Jenny's uh, completed work, we see that one metaphor in the poem, Dreams, by Langston Hughes, is life is a broken-winged bird that cannot fly. And if you did analyze the poem, you would have noticed 
that metaphor is in the first stanza of the poem, right? Good. This is great so far. The poem is, sorry, the poet is comparing a life with no dreams to a bird that cannot fly because its wings are broken. Very good comparison. Excellent. And let's see, lastly, uh, about the effectiveness. Okay, so students, well, our final activity for today will be completing something called an exit ticket. Now, you must complete this ticket, otherwise you may not be able to leave class today. All right? So I'm going to give one to each of you. For those of you working online, you just need to fill up the exit ticket that's provided and send it in to me, okay? Those of you in class, um, you need to fill in the information here and then bring it to my desk and hand it to me before you leave the classroom today. The exit ticket has basically three parts of it. One part asks you to fill in what you would have learned. The other part asks the next class. you to fill in. So when you submit your exit ticket to me here, please make sure you collect your um, entrance ticket for the next classroom because you need to submit that to me before you come into class next time, all right? The item that it will ask you to walk it. So you can get working on this now. All right, students, let's see uh, what was written here. We had Jonathan, Carl, and um, Padmini who volunteered for us to see what they would have written on their exit tickets. And so Jonathan has, what he's learned is that metaphor is compared to unlike things. Um, he says he still needs help with understanding that metaphors help to create images in our mind so that we can understand what a writer is saying. All right. And she says she does not need help with anything. She understands everything. All right. And she also circled the first emoji to smiley face. All right, students, do remember to collect your exit ticket. I'm um, sorry, your entrance ticket for next class before you leave. Have a good day.